Hi, welcome to the Valley of the Lost, a podcast where we look into missing persons and murder in our great state, Arizona. I'm Nicole. I'm Anne. Grab a drink. Get comfy. And let's get lost. Hi. Hey, guys. Welcome. <laughs> another cheers, guys. To Yeah, cheers. Another episode of Valley of the Lost. All right. <laughs> Tonight, we are discussing the disappearance of Adam Castillo. He is from Wilcox, Arizona, and on September 13th, 2008, Adam would attend a party in an area the locals would refer to as The Loop. He was last seen at around 2 a.m. getting ready to leave. He has not been seen since that night, and no trace of him or evidence has ever been found. He was the youngest of three boys and three younger sisters. His family was very close and continued to fight and look for answers. If it was not for his sister's TikTok, Ariana Castillo, I would not have known about this case. During the height of the pandemic, like many, she went onto TikTok and witnessed Sarah Turney's videos, bringing awareness to her sister, Alyssa Turney. And if you're familiar with true crime, I'm sure, you know, you are because you're listening. She brought a lot of attention to that and the case got reopened. It was solved and it's very sad, very sad. But awesome what the kind of work that she's doing. She actually has a podcast called Voices for Justice podcast. And that's actually where what kind of what I was listening to kind of getting ready for tonight. It's a really good podcast. You his she has his sisters on there and you get a really good kind of account of what kind of person Adam was. He was he seemed to be really funny, really genuine kind of all around a really good guy, which I feel like there's kind of like a shortage of that. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and yeah, and Nicole, I feel like it's weird doing cases like this because I feel like he would have been around our age. So it just, I felt like it kind of hit close to home. Like he skateboarded a lot. He was kind of emo. And I don't know, so was I. <laughs> back then yeah. what, what year was he born uh i don't think i got that actually but he was 20 or how old was he 21 22 oh. when he went disappeared yeah he was just a young guy and i'm pretty sure i was i was 21 around that time i don't know it's just weird all right i'm getting hung up on it yeah <laughs> <laughs> well it's hard not to because i mean that's that's it is like it just doesn't make sense like why him right. and someone not someone else or not us or you know yeah and like I kind of I felt like I kind of got attached to him like just going over this case and like researching it like he really did when I, I already said he seemed genuine but he really did seem genuine like just a really good person there's he, he kind of seemed just kind of like a hero almost like someone well, who would stick up for the little guy you know what I mean he just with I feel like the world has a huge shortage of those people. And totally. it just really makes me sad, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So Adam and his family moved to Wilcox, Arizona from Surprise near Phoenix. on skateboarding around 12 years old and was hooked. He was what you would call a skater boy. In fact, he knew that was what he wanted to do. He felt a sponsor sponsorship was near, and he wasn't wrong. A scout actually took notice of him. Uh, the scout was from Vans, but unfortunately, Ooh. right? I thought that was so cool. Uh, but so cool. Unfortunately, that was right when his family moved to Wilcox, and Aww. he was crushed. He felt like his dreams had been ripped from him. And I get it. Like, he's an adolescent at this point, And, like, I I would get emo, too, if I felt that way. Like, you know, like, I've been there. I was emo. Like, who am I kidding? I well, dyed my like, hair black. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all went through it. And, like, I think, you know, to be a skateboard as a professional, you know, wasn't really seen as, like, something that was a, a feasible job. Right. I feel like it's like when a kid, yeah. like when my kids like, I want to be a YouTuber. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, <Yeah>. all right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you can do that, but just, you know, do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> maybe let's focus on a part-time job, too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Let's let's still let's still go to school though, right? Like 
let's still do <laughs> yeah, that. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but mm. I mean, just I mean, if you guys knew the YouTube like channels that he watched and stuff like that, like I'm just it's like the MTV, I feel like, of our age, totally. I guess. Totally. It uh, is 100 percent Right? It's like when people would be like, I want to be a VJ. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yep that's real life right uh he did adam did seem to make the most out of moving to wilcox though he never really he, he and his mom still had kind of a rift because of this move though and they never really got past that until like leading up to him to adam disappearing there was a tragedy in their family his nephew had passed away and his mother was taking the loss of her grandbaby very hard. Adam was a hundred. Terrible. Oh, right. Like I can't even imagine, but he was a hundred percent there for her. And they actually bond, like they had a bonding experience over this and it was a real big breakthrough for them is what his sisters were saying. Uh, and prior as well, which really sucks for him. I feel bad because when it rains, you know, it pours. Uh, his girl, his longtime girlfriend, Wendy, they had actually separated and broken things off. And he also, I, I read somewhere that he may have lost his job at the local gas station he was working at. So he was kind of like in a slump, which is kind of, I think, what and that, that that's all kind of leading up to the party and kind of one of the reasons why he went to the party in the first place is just to kind of hang out with friends and like put himself in like a different setting and like situation but before single ready to mingle (laughs) exactly (laughs) exactly uh but -hmm. before we go too much farther i want to set the scene of wilcox i want to put wilcox into perspective (laughs) (laughs) like i didn't do like i only did one like one stat but (laughs) i didn't look into like the houses or anything like that or income or anything like that but it's a city located in Cochise County, so southeast Arizona. In 2019, it had a population of 3,533. So, extremely, oh. yeah, extremely small town. And like, and maybe it's not to some, but to me, I'm from Phoenix. Like, that is a small ass town. And even when I moved to Ogden in northern Utah, like. That's still a small ass town. The primary industries are agriculture and wine production, and it's nestled between several of Arizona's largest mountain ranges, including the Chiricahua Mountains. So not much to do if you're young. Lots of desert parties in the middle of nowhere. And we are going to be discussing one of them right now. Getting to that morning, September 13th, 2008, his two younger sisters, Ariana and Eden, were talking to him about a party that was going to happen that night. It was the birthday of an acquaintance they knew, thought it would be good for Adam to get out and have some fun. They even joked about finding him a new girl at the party. He agreed and seemed to look forward to it. Eden, his younger sister, was not allowed to attend the party due to her age. I think she was like 13 or 14. She was younger. And, re- and let me remind you, Adam's 21. Uh, Ariana's yeah. a lot closer Adam's age. Uh, so they're oh, they're okay. more like Irish twins in a way. But uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so Eden's a lot younger. Oh, but she was still going to go. She still planned on going regardless. Okay. Reg- she was going to go with her two older siblings. So she figured she'd be fine. So later on that evening... Adam's buddies showed up, Cody, Gary, Levi, and Kino. And we will hear all about these men a little bit later in the story. The car that they were driving in didn't fit Adam's two sisters, so they agreed they would catch a ride with another friend. But in the end, their friend canceled on them, and they didn't make it that night, and they remained home. What? Which is very, yeah. Yeah. Right? Suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> that, I feel like I read somewhere someone had pointed that out. Like somewhere down Reddit. Like I was, I, I went down the re- the Reddit hole and down <laughs> the the YouTube hole and all of that on this. The Facebook hole even. Like so a 
a lot of theories that I'm going to be talking about. That's the thing. They're all theories. So don't go find anybody in that town and be like, you did this. Like, please, let, let pressure get put on the sheriff station. Like, let, let it happen. Don't don't go attack anyone, guys. These, these are all theories and things that have been said that we are, that I am telling you that have been said. There's, that That's all. So yeah. put that, that out of the way. <laughs> Yes. Because it, it gets wild. Like, it gets wild, Nicole. There's so many rumors. There's so many things. And we're going to – let me get to them. So they didn't make it. And then it's also worth noting that Adam did not bring his wallet or his phone with him. What? Right. He may have decided he didn't need them since he was going to be with friends. Maybe he forgot them. I'm And I'm speculating here because nobody knows for sure why he wouldn't have taken these items with him. I mean, yeah, I guess it's like a- you're going to a party and you're driving like you need your driver's license. Well, his friend was driving. OK, his friend was driving know. him. So I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll get I to I'll, so. I'll get to that. I'll talk about who was driving because it's all like I feel like it's all important. Like yeah. every, every detail of this case, I feel like is super important. And like I have my theory and I don't even know if I'm going to share it tonight, if that makes sense. Um, Nicole, I'll probably tell you later, and then I want to hear from okay. everybody their theories. Like you tell me yours, and I'll tell you mine. Kind of a deal. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but all right. So, and then another thing that's important to talk about is that, like I said, all the rumors. So everybody who was at the party, like, has a different account, kind of on what happened. So a lot of things. There's a lot of different things that have been said that have never been, like, questioned, I don't think, or looked into or followed up on. Very strange. So, now we're going to get to the driver. Cody was driving. So, Cody, one of the gentlemen he was with, was driving, and he drops off Adam, Gary, and Kino at the cattle guard near where the party was. Levi and Cody actually end up by just leaving. And per Cody, it was because he doesn't drink. I feel like that's so weird. Also, hmm. right? Also, Levi's mother says that she spoke to him that night around 12:30 a.m. and at 1 a.m. he asked his mom to pick him up at Cody's house. Adam's sister called Levi as well. He seemed to be the only one that had a phone on him. She called him and he told her that he had to leave because he was in trouble with his parents and he couldn't stay. He had to get home, which doesn't really make any sense to me because he was at Cody's house. Because remember, he called his mom to come pick him up. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I okay. I, I just thought that was weird. Like, yeah. From what he told Adam's sister compared to like what. Him having his mom come and pick him up at Cody's house. Like, I thought you were in trouble. Anyways, so now we're at the party. It had about 25 to 30 party goers. There was a lot of drugs and alcohol happening at this desert party. And it was a mix of high schoolers and young adults. And let's remember, I just want to come back to this again, that his 13 or 14-year-old sister was the one who was originally invited. (laughs) All right. Well, you know, there you go. (laughs) Yeah. A few other men, a few other men we will be focusing on um, and discussing tonight will be Toby, Jose, and Armando. So, I believe it was Armando's birthday party, and he was the acquaintance um, that the girls that they that they were talking about earlier. Oh, okay. At, at some point, some party goers say that Jose and Gary were shooting Toby's gun, and later on, Gary actually fell into the fire. What? Jesus. <laughs> Dude, it, it keeps coming up. Adam kids most, will be kids. Adam most likely, with the help of others, dragged Gary out of the fire, but he was badly burned. He ends up passing out, and most people have left by 2 to 3 a.m. So, in the early hours of the next morning, Gary actually goes to Adam's house and meets Ariana in the front yard and asks if Adam's home. She almost recoils. He is with you last night. You know where he's at. And he shrugs and takes a drink of his 40 ounce in the morning. I'm just 
looks over at the dashboard in his car and says, if Adam comes back, tell him thank you because I think he saved my life. He nodded to the dude driving and they drove away. And all I have to say to that is WT actual F. What is that? Who does that? Whoa. And when he said he saved his life, was he talking about the fire incident that we discussed earlier? Because we never really get an actual answer either on what he meant by that. It's really frustrating. His family knows that this is not normal for Adam and something is very wrong here. Grace, Adam's mom, calls the Cochise County Sheriff's Department to file a missing persons. But, of course, they refused to open one until it had been 48 hours. Oh, God. So fucking frustrating. Mm-hmm. That's so frustrating. I don't even think that's a real thing either. Like, I feel like that's just something. And I don't know. Maybe somebody can clarify that for me because I don't know. But I just don't feel like that's a real thing. I feel like that's something like when HR people tell you not to talk about how much money you make. It's like, no, we can. <laughs> it's kind of a right. Yeah. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> His family ended up going to the loop and looking for him themselves. No sign of Adam is found, and they begin to let his other siblings know who, like, weren't living with them. Uh, they call his his sister, Cassandra, who's closest to him in age, in California. She listened to her gut and took time off work and went to her family immediately. The sheriff's department began working the case the following Monday, just shy of 48 hours. So way to go, guys. Good job. During this, they had to determine whether or not the location of the party was on private or public lands. The loop does seem to be on private land. And this does hinder the search. They first went out to the scene, like before they went out with the sheriffs, when they went by themselves. It was scattered with debris. There were tires. There was beer bottles, just trash everywhere from this desert rager. However... When the family and investigators went back, there was a cleaning crew there. There were city work. Yeah. Listen to this, Nicole. There were city workers cleaning up the desert on this private property. That doesn't make any sense if it that if that was public land, if it was like BML land or something like that, I feel like that still wouldn't make sense. Yeah, unless what? unless the people who own the land called the cl- called the cleanup crew, when did they or, clean up themselves? Yeah, like or yeah, but I mean, yeah, I don't know how the city cleaners would get involved. I mean, they could call a cleanup crew, but to get the city, unless the people who own the land complain to the city, I, I don't. I mean, yeah, but that fast. Mm. You know, it would be interesting too to find out who owned that land. Yeah, that let's sucks. Google map this shit. <laughs> I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to report back on like an update on like another yeah. episode at some point because I'm actually really interested in finding mm-hmm. that out. I say all the time, I'm not I'm not a sleuth. I'm not a detective. I just like to talk about this stuff and tell people stories, but I want justice for Adam. Yeah, and I mean, obviously the detectives don't have enough time to devote, so why not, you know, help yeah, them out? Like, I don't, I can't believe I didn't get that. So that that's a question that I have. Who owned that land? Who had it cleaned up? Who's got money? And I feel like, did you hear that whisper? Oh my gosh, how creepy. I'm <laughs> creepy. So as police questioned the men Adam was with that night and several men from the party, things start to get really wild and nothing really adds up and questions i already have like the several questions that i've already had during this podcast i have like eight more (laughs) for every question there's like eight more so remember levi from before well his his mom was dating gary's father when she saw gary yeah when she saw gary after the party she obviously asked him about the burns on his face remember he fell into the fire (laughs) he told her he told her he had fallen into the fire at the party 
there was a search for Adam on the 17th, a few days after he went missing. She asked Cody and Gary if they were going to help look for their friend, and Gary said it was a waste of time because he is not out there. When later asked about this, Gary said he just assumed he wasn't there because they had already looked. So Gary and Cody both say it was code like they both confirmed that Cody was the one who picked Gary up in the morning at the loop. And so this is really mm-hmm. interesting too because he actually tells Adam's sister Cassandra something different and that's never really I don't I don't feel like that's ever really been questioned either. So and hmm. I I don't it's it's just weird. So we'll get back to that as well. So there's so many there's so many rabbit holes. There's so many moving parts, man. <laughs> So Cody picked up Gary that morning and took him back to Kino's house where he took a shower and then went with the, uh, an unknown person to Adam's house when he spoke to his sister that morning. So when police asked to see the car that Cody had driven that night, he says it broke down while driving to Tucson and it was towed. He couldn't afford the fees and ended up by signing it over to the tow yard. When investigators follow up on this, they tow- the tow company actually said that it was an abandoned car on the highway and that the owner has never contacted them and they were trying to get the rights like to the title. So Ooh, that's shady. Super shady. Super weird. I thought they were friends. And I feel like none of these guys really are even helpful in yeah. any way. The car is tracked down by police. It's processed. Pictures are taken. A shoe is found. Not of Adam. I don't think it was Adam's. Like just random shit is taken. And nothing really come becomes of that search or the car, which is fucking disappointing. So weird. So now we're on to another guy that he was with. Mm-hmm. Kino. One of the original dudes that stayed at the party with Adam. He told police he was there for a girl he liked. He was there for love. This was the first time at the location, and he was very intoxicated. Kino claims to have seen Gary stumbling around and then fall into the fire. And again, that's just going to keep coming up. He was not pushed. I repeat, he was not pushed into the fire. He fell. Adam and Jose all helped Gary out of the fire per Kino them and his friends around 1 a.m. and confirms Adam was still there. He also told investigators that later after the party, he heard a rumor that Adam was shot five times at the party in front of everybody. Hmm. Yeah. That's one of the wild things we're going to hear. Now, Gary's full statement. Let me tell you about it. (laughs) Oh, God. He claims that Adam was the one who wanted to go to the party and meet girls, and they all decided... Why not? While he had been extremely intoxicated even before the party, he said that he never heard or saw a gun. So now we're going to talk about like the guns coming back into play again. Nobody pushed him into the fire. This is him talking to police. Nobody pushed me. Um, Okay. And he just fell. (laughs) Yeah. He is really clumsy, I guess, and was too drunk to remember things clearly. And after being pulled from the fire... He doesn't remember much. He woke up, kind of came to, and was in a brown truck that multiple people had described seeing, and this was Toby's truck. In Gary's interviews, he's also – I I just want to note that in his interviews, he's flagged for deception within behavior, but he does just blame it on his nerves. So I'm going to talk about Armando, the birthday boy. He is wild in Wilcox. There are all sorts of rumors about his family. His family, oh. yeah, his family is known to be into some pretty crazy wild stuff, just like miles and miles above your average small town dealing. And that sounds pretty bad. <laughs> Like, that doesn't yeah. sound good. Alrighty then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a great time. Uh sounds really stressful and sketchy and awful. Uh 
and he wasn't ever really questioned like formally either they called him and asked him some questions and he actually ended up by going into the uh into the uh, police station on his own he heard that his friend jose had been arrested and rumors were that they were going to come after him and factual at all they didn't arrest jose they weren't going to go arrest him but they did use this opportunity to ask him some more questions uh and what he said was that he and jose left the party around 2 a.m and the only ones who were still there were adam gary and toby he also went on about toby's truck the brown truck Hmm. that brown brown truck. truck it had flat tires plural tires and a dead battery toby called him in the morning to help him find help him with his truck armando makes no comments about the gun or gary even falling into the fire when jose is questioned he did say toby had his gun out and he and gary were shooting it but never mentioned gary in the fire he did confirm leaving around 2 a.m. with Armando and the last people who were there, Toby, Gary, and Adam. And it wasn't just these two guys either saying that those were the last three there. Eight different witness statements confirmed this. And there were several names that were redacted. So I am i didn't even bother like looking up who those other eight were. Just I'm going to take that as fact. The next morning, he went with Armando to help with Toby's truck. So, next, investigators talked to Toby. He said that he had gotten to the party around 11.45 p.m. and didn't see the fire situation with Gary because his back was turned and only saw the aftermath of Gary falling into the fire. He did leave twice with Armando to get beer and did take out his gun and let his friend shoot it. Elephant in the room for me, I'm, like, wondering, well, like, did you guys ask him more about his gun? Like what happened they did investigators asked toby if uh an accident had occurred and he swears nothing nothing like that happened uh he was busy working on his truck between 2 a.m to 3 a.m you know with the flat tires multiple flat tires and a dead battery and i just think it's wild too that you can work on your and I I don't know a lot about cars but I do know that I know if I have a flat tire and if my battery is dead like it's not something I need to work on in the dark yeah well and like why wouldn't you just wait till the morning yeah and especially if you don't like it if if you don't have the parts like what are you gonna do magically jump your battery like what that doesn't make any sense to me and again, I don't know a lot about cars, but I would know when my battery's dead. And flat tires, how did you get to the party with mul- – like, what? Did you blow right. out multiple tires? Did you guys shoot your tires? Why did you have multiple oh, – yeah. Why were there multiple flat tires? That's so weird to me. Yeah. And again, I don't feel like any of the stuff was really questioned that much by investigators. I just feel like yeah, I mean, it knocked him out on the way to the party. Like, if there was rocks on the like the dirt road or something like that, or but we over ran a over lot. a nail. Like, how many? Yeah, make, the like, odds of multiple dinner. tires. Right, I can definitely see getting a flat tire on. Like, you know, you're going like to a desert party in the middle of nowhere, really, on someone's private property. But it's, I don't know. It's just weird to me. So. And to get back to the story, not long after 3 a.m., Toby says something wild. Guys, guys. He claims he saw Adam get picked up in a four-door sedan, but didn't catch the make or see the driver. He assumed Adam knew them. He heard them exchange a few words. He continued working on his truck. Again, working on your truck doing what? You don't have a battery. Did you change a tire? Is that why there were tires out there? Did you change a tire? Like, I I just, I want to know more about these tires, man. Yeah, it's weird. (laughs) It's weird. And if you needed, if if your battery was dead and you needed a jump, why wouldn't you flag them down? Yeah, to give you a jump if your battery was dead. Why would you not do that? It doesn't, 
yeah any sense to me okay so that's just really weird Hmm. yeah toby and toby didn't want to leave his truck so around this time he was planning on staying the whole night he did eventually decide to leave and head back in the morning and that like you know how he called out armando and him and him yeah. and Jose went out and helped him with his flat tires, and I gotta keep. I gotta keep. Yeah, so that means they S. So they went back out to the place where he went missing. And then the next morning, they were there. The next morning. Oh wow! I didn't even. Yeah. Yeah. What the? What the? This all sucks. Mm. Like it all just so sucks. Three. What time did he go get in the sedan? Supposedly three o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little after three. Okay. So I don't know. It just really upsets me. I hate stuff like this. Like you went to a party with your goddamn friends. What the fuck happened? Sorry. (laughs) Supposed friends. Well, yeah, supposed yeah. friends, because these don't really seem like – they all seem like they're covering up for somebody else. Some, they're, something is being covered up, right? Like something is Oh, being- 100%. Because why don't they all have the story the same? Why are the story – not all of the story – like this party wasn't that big, so you mean to tell me that not everybody saw the gear – like, okay, yeah, I guess your back is turned to him, whatever, but – Everybody must have saw the dude falling into the fire. Maybe the detectives just knew that as facts, so they didn't ask that question. I don't know. Does it? None of this makes sense. Makes sense. And there, remember how we talked about how small the town was? Right. There, in small town, and it's rumors, man. Like, there are so yeah. many rumors circulating around this town at this point. And I just feel so bad for the family. And if they're listening, I. I want nothing more than for you guys to get the justice and the peace that y'all deserve. Like, absolutely. This is is heartbreaking and frustrating. And I'm really sorry for what you have had to go through. Like, I'm sorry. This sucks. So, so Gary was basically like Pat, passed out in toby's truck right so you're gonna hear more okay but when okay. i get into the theories and whatnot uh you're gonna okay because i okay because like once, gary slept there so did gary wake up by himself in the middle of the desert without so toby remember yes yes because toby oh, did, did des- toby did decide to go home um, in the end. Fuck, Toby. So just leave your friend passed out in your truck? What the fuck? Cause I guess I'll I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna do this before we really get okay. into the theories. Okay. Uh just okay. because of what we're talking about. Cassandra yeah. came to visit afterwards, like after the searches and whatnot for a holiday for an mm-hmm. Easter, and she saw Gary uh driving mm-hmm. down the road and she basically like ran him off the road. And was basically, like, what the fuck? Where is my brother? And mm-hmm. I don't blame her. I would have done the same yeah. thing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And he was crying. He began crying. And like, she's like, where is my brother? And he's like, I'm so, he just kept saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know. I don't know where he's at. Uh, and then she asked him, she's like, well, what do you remember? And I guess Gary had put, I guess, Adam had put Gary to sleep in a car. We don't know whose car. But Adam had put Gary to sleep in the back seat of a car. Adam, he just the last things he remembers before passing out was Adam telling him, "You got to sleep it off, bro. Like sleep it off. You're you're too drunk. Sleep it off." And then he passed out. Hmm, okay. So nobody knows what happened, how he got into Toby's truck. When he awoke in Toby's truck, he had no shoes on. Gary ends up by just walking home. And his sister's boyfriend was out driving around looking for him. And picked him up and brought him home. And if you remember, in the beginning of the story, Cody brought him home. Mm. He said he called Cody. 
But as far as Ariana, hmm. his other Adam's other sister knew Levi yeah. was the only one with the phone. So Weird. at the very beginning, Gary fucking lied. Right. Why? And to what end did he have to lie yeah. about who the fuck picked him up from the party in the morning? Right. I right. and to me, it's so frustrating, especially if it doesn't even have anything to do with Adam disappearing. Why lie about it? And why isn't this yeah. being questioned and looked at? Like, I don't know. Hmm. It's to it just does not sit well with me at all. Yeah, so, reasonable. No, and so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get into some other theories that I feel like are more popular than the one that I have. Okay, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> And again, I'm not sh- I still am not sure if I'm going to share mine or not because again, no one is being tried. No and again, we have like four listeners. <laughs> and we love you. 20 <laughs> 20 20 <laughs> listeners and we love every single one of you. So, the most common theory or rumor is that Gary owed Armando money for drugs. And mm. he was pushed into the fire and Adam rescued him because we all know Adam's a decent human being. He was left after the fire, after pulling his friend out of the fire, left to face the wrath of Armando and his pals. A few tales have gone so far as to say that he was beaten, tied up, and thrown into the back of Armando's truck. A few have said that he shot Adam right there at the party in front of everyone. Gary's dad's girlfriend, Levi's mom, remember? Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Said she heard Gary over the phone once telling someone he will pay them back. He just needs to get a job first. And it just seems like there was a lot of – to me, it just seems like there was a lot of witnesses there. And if I was Armando, I don't know if I would do something in front of everybody. Right, and again, totally. I don't, I don't live there. I don't know them. Maybe he threatened them into silence. I don't know, but that's a lot of people to threaten into silence. Yeah, like totally. That's a lot of crazy variables right there. Like you don't know what's going to happen. Another rumor is that Adam was doing cocaine with Armando and Jose at the party. He either did too much and overdosed or knocked over the tray and raging the men. And honestly, though, again, from the accounts that his sisters gave, and just reading about him, I don't think that he was the type to snore a fatty line at a party or snore a fatty line ever. Maybe once or twice, but I I, I don't know him. But yeah, I don't think I don't think he was a hard drug user in any sense. I did get the impression that he may have smoked the ganja every once in a while. Got you. But I, I mean, that. yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't think he really partook in hard drugs. So Hmm. there's that theory. Some people say, like I was telling you earlier, that he is the hero type and he liked to stand up for the little guy or anyone who seemed to be in trouble. In one version um, that someone had told was that a girl was being assaulted and he intervened and rescued her and he was killed for it and an anonymous witness anonymous 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 witness came forward and said they had heard he was talking poorly about some people from Bowie, arizona it's near wilcox uh and people from Bowie who the people from Bowie who were at the party were really upset by this and decided to kill him a very well-known rumor, which is I feel like this is a really popular one, too. I read it in every story I read about Adam, was that a girl in a red Honda came and picked him up. The only girl in town with a red Honda did come forward, and she said that she was never at that party. But she did hear that he may have accidentally been shot, and Jose and Armando covered it up. So, with the plethora, plethora, plethora of rumors spreading, 
the Cochise County Sheriff o- Sheriff's Office actually shut down the high school for an entire day just to question students to see if they can get some leads to find out if they could figure out what was going on, what what's happening. Uh, no leads really came in for Adam, but it did lead to several drug busts, which are not tied to Adam. And his sisters definitely want that out there. It was He is not tied to that at all. Remember his ex-girlfriend, Wendy? She was heartbroken. She even went around looking for answers in nearby towns like Safford and Bowie. The searches for Adam have not been fruitful. They have done several now in the loop and some in surrounding areas. On September 27th, uh, there were specific, and this is, I think, the following, like September 27th of that same year, 2008. There were specific instructions to look for 22 casings, a 22 rifle, any disturbances that could indicate a shallow grave, and the clothing he was last seen wearing. In October... 2008, they found a large hole dug between two mesquite trees, two feet wide and four feet deep and two feet, two feet wide, four feet long and two feet deep. Agents went looking around and found a piece of duct tape, but for some reason didn't do anything with it, came back for it, couldn't find it. And then a month later, the age, one of the agents came back with his boss and they, they did happen to find it in a blue plastic broken handle like one of those tote bins. So again, hmm. you know, super disappointing, right? Eventually. Like when, when you have like DNA that, I mean, just in general, like potentially could have been for another case. Right. Yeah. I know. How often are people finding bodies in the desert here? I know that's really like grim and morbid to say, but. But it's real. Yeah. Look at Daniel Robinson's case. How many bodies did they find looking for him? Yep. Come on. Come on, guys. Yeah. And eventually in 2009, the the case went cold. Wow. There hasn't really been any movement. Um, if, if you are listening, if you're from Wilcox, Arizona, and if you are listening and you do hear this and you have information, it's never too late. Come forward. Uh, you can contact the Cochise County Sheriff's Office at 520-803-3280. And I will be posting photos of Adam on our Instagram page. Please share his face and please get it out there. Go check out Ariana's TikTok account. It's at Justice for Adam Castillo. Go listen to the Vanished podcast, Adam Castillo's story, Voices for Justice, Sarah Turney. Look at the Charlie Project on Adam as well. So the charlieproject.org. Um, please share his stories, share his sister's TikTok videos, watch them, follow them. Let's put pressure on the investigators and let's get something done, guys. This sucks. I'm heartbroken. Well, it's so sad. Yeah. Well, just that there's no answers. Again, this is like another situation where someone goes missing and there's nothing. It's just poof. Gone. Yeah. Gone. And people know something. Those friends know something. Armando knows something. Jose knows something. For sure. Right. I want to hear what everyone thinks happened. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'll share with you guys what I think happened. But I think... I just feel like... what I feel like what I think makes the most sense. But I feel like I haven't really heard too much about that. Gotcha. Well, I'll make sure to put a poll on Spotify of what you think happened. Please and do. then tell us your theory. I, maybe we'll put it in. Maybe we don't. I'm just curious. Okay. My theory is that I think that Gary or Jose, one of the guys shooting the gun, I think he mm-hmm. may have accidentally shot Adam. And I think they covered it up. I guess it was kind of mentioned. Um, Or I just, I really think, and I think all the guys covered it up together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I they can. I think they concocted this like whole stories, man. Mm-hmm. People were. It seems to me, and like, and to backtrack a little bit too, like when Levi's mom was picking him up from Cody's house, she saw Cody's car there, but she didn't see him there. Hmm. So where was Cody? 
Right. Like, I just feel like nobody really seems to be in the spot they said that they were supposed to be. I feel like there's just so much that doesn't make sense to me. Like, why was Toby working on his dead battery and flat tires? At 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are you going to do to a yeah. dead battery, bro? Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. start it telepathically like what are you gonna do i don't <laughs> understand i don't understand no i don't get it either i don't no. know man I, I i don't understand i think i don't know and there maybe there's something to the armando story too because it always came back to gary in the fire i did find maybe. that very very strange and the people who left the fire part out yeah you know right Right, and made a point to say he wasn't pushed. You're basically saying he was pushed. Right. Because <laughs> why say it then? So you know? strange. I feel like it's so yeah. strange. Something happened that night. Nobody really knows what happens except for the people. And nobody except wants for those the people truth to come out. There. Yeah. Yeah, and they, and they don't want the truth to come out. Don't be scared, guys. You, It's never too late to come forward. Never. Please do so. Yeah gosh do the right thing guys share it tell us what you think let us know let us know your theories your thoughts on this and go check out his sister's tiktok let's get lost get lost guys (laughs) man Hey guys, Anne here. I hope you really enjoyed listening to our episode tonight. And uh, if you have some extra time, why don't you go ahead and go rate us over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Even maybe check us out on YouTube. I don't know. Whatever you have time for. 